Good morning, y'all. Good morning. I'm going to read something that I came across. It's a, a Charles Spurgeon devotional, and I just really like his stuff, and it's sometimes really cuts to the quick. And his uh, devotional for December 16th, which was yesterday, came out of uh, Matthew 11:28, and I'll read that. It says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give them rest. His devotion goes on. This is the one for the morning. It says, The cry of the Christian religion is the gentle word, Come. The Jewish law harshly said, Go, take heed to thy steps as the path in which thou shalt walk. The law was a dispensation of terror which drove men before it, as it is with a scourge. The gospel draws with bands of love. Jesus is the good shepherd, going before his sheep, bidding them follow him, and ever leading them onwards with sweet words, come. The law repels, the gospel attracts. The law shows the distance there is between God and man, and the gospel bridges that awful chasm and brings the sinner across it. From the first moment of your spiritual life until you are ushered into glory, the language of Christ to you will be, Come unto me. As a mother puts forth her finger to a little child and woos it to walking, saying, Come, so does Jesus. He will always be ahead of you, bidding you to follow him as the soldier follows his captain. He will always go before you to pave your way and to clear your path. And you shall hear his animating voice calling to you after him all through life, while in the solemn hour of death his sweet words with which he shall usher you into heaven shall be, Come, ye blessed of my Father. Nay, further, this is not only Christ's cry unto you, but if you are a believer, this is your cry to Christ, Come, come. You will be longing for his second advent. You will be saying, Come quickly, even so, Lord Jesus. You will be panting for nearer and closer communion with him, and his voice to you is, Come. Your response to him will be, Come, Lord, quickly and abide with me. Come and occupy alone the throne of my heart. Reign there without rival and consecrate me entirely to thy servant. You know, in different places in the, in the Bible, it talks about the difficulties that rich people have. You know, maybe this, this is why the Bible says it's more difficult for a rich man to get into heaven than a camel to get through the eye of the needle. Not that God thinks it's a super duper thing for us to be poor or not to have anything or to enjoy the things of life. But sometimes those things of life get in our way of asking Jesus to come. Think about it. When was the last time, and I know especially if you're younger, it probably doesn't pop in your mind. When was the last time you just asked Jesus to come and you were excited about not this advent, we should be excited about that, but the second advent of his coming, saying, come on, Lord, I'm ready. You know, Jesus is constantly calling, come, and we're supposed to emulate our Lord, so uh, I'm thinking maybe we should be saying, come on, Lord, come on. So as we celebrate the first advent, let's think about the second advent, because it's right behind it, man. Life is just full of one one Jesus advent after another, and the big one's yet to come, and we should be looking forward to that, saying, come on, Lord, let's get ready. Amen? Amen. Dear God, Heavenly Father, man, we just love you so much. We love you for sending Jesus, and we ought to just be excited and busting loose the thought of him coming forth for the second advent. Be with us this morning as we study your word and take your word on our heart and take it out into the world. In the very powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen.